Has it gone live? Has it gone live? Maybe it has. I better put my headphones on, I can't hear myself actually. It's no good when you can't hear what's going on. Is that better? Hello? Hello? Anyone there? Hello? Yeah, there's one person viewing. Thank you, audience, for uh, the one person that will view for a few seconds before switching on to something else. I've got my lockdown hairstyle growing out. This is a hairstyling episode. And uh, starting with just simply pulling it as tight as you can to get the height in your hair uh, with headphones on. It's, uh, it's great. Uh, so yes, I'm doing some painting. Uh, I did some of this the other day, some painting of some models from this book called Barrow Maze Complete, which is a classic fantasy mega dungeon and a company in the UK called um, Otherworld Miniatures. Uh, they sell a range of models for this, which I've been painting. So I'll get that book out of the way. I mean, there's the book as well. You went, <laughs> uh, I've got a green screen. So that means all the green goes away on the book too. Um, so yeah, you can see that a bit better there, but I'm too zoomed in. I've got a pop. I think that means someone said something. Hello, nice hair. Yes, thank you. Who said that, I wonder? Who said that? TK scale models. Hello, TK scale models. Try not to get that book to, to fall over. Also turn my sound off because that's it. Okay. Right, back to a small face. Which is me in the corner, shrinking down. Yes. Uh, so before me, I have this range of models. I started the other day and I was just doing a bit more today. And these are from other world miniatures in the UK, and these are actually from the uh, from that actual book, uh, Barrow Maze. Some kind of zombie creatures. I, I've got a funny feeling the crisp, the sort of things coming out of their bodies are meant to be green or something. Like I don't know, but I've done them in a pinky, fleshy type tone, and I just did them with washes and things really. So it's kind of speed painting. This one needs a bit more work. Uh, that one's okay. They're both going to get oil washes as the last stage. Um, so it's just making them look really dirty, grubby, filthy, zombie-like really. And uh, yeah, before me to do that, I have, um, I've got a wet palette here. Uh, the miniatures are up on, on here while I paint. So I sort of zoom down onto them to show them as also the palette there. So I have been experimenting with Liquitex um, paints, these acrylic Gauche, goosh, you say goosh? You don't really need to shake them, I'm shaking it there. Um, the lids pop off and they have like a squeezy tub style uh, because they're quite thick. As you can see there, it goes on as a little squidge. Uh, I'm going to try to put the lid back on there wrong. So if I get my sort of primary colours out, there's their nice, uh, they do this basic set, primary blue, primary red. Oh, that's not going to squeeze. Oh, probably a bit too much there. And then some green. So this is going to disappear on against the green screen, isn't it? Yeah, green. Green down there. Emerald green, they call this one. Yes, yeah, so I'm going to kind of mix the colours as I go. So I get a yellow, a black to darken. That one's not come out too good. This yellow is really good and strong in terms of pigment. Hi, Adam. And what haven't I put down? A white and a black, just so for mixing. So if you were on a budget um, and you were starting out miniature painting, this is kind of all the colours you ne will ever need. You'll never need dozens and dozens of paints from Games Workshop called Pox Green or bile pink or whatever else they are because it will just uh, you can just mix them up with these primary colors but if you are using if you think you want to give these a try sometimes you can find these on offer on amazon these liquitex paints um 
they are very thick so they're not as thick as say a tube of paint you know a tube of acrylic that an artist acrylic would use it's thinner because it's this goosh gauche um but they're good for me at least anyway i quite like the way they mix up and the other thing i use a lot of is the glaze medium so i've got a little ball bearing in there oh so actually i've dripped that on there but i like to try and keep the glaze medium away from the because it's really just as thin as water it starts to run over the pad uh, i don't like it to mix up with the uh, mix up too much with the paints there because the whole bloody thing becomes a mess and um, the danger then is that oh, it's already run into my little green there where it drips things just all start blending together in one big um, mod podge on there I do use the Games Workshop colour, so I was saying, you know, about being conservative with your costs by getting just your primary colours and then mixing. Goo Ash. Tell me your prime at painting an entire army with that amount. Yes, I've got about 1,000 models to do today, Adam. Um, starting with these two, and then I'm going to see how I get on. Um, but yeah, I did put a lot down on there, don't I? But I don't know. So that's probably rather too much. And because it's such a strong pigment, and I'm going to thin it, I've put way too much. But I'll tell you what, I'd, I'd like you to try these as soon as you squash this to try and get a bit out. It, nothing comes, and then you just give it a little bit too much, and then pfft, it's on there, and you've you've had it. So you kind of end up with a whole load of paint on there. But I was going to say, you know, I was talking about being conservative and just doing some mixing of colours. Um, in fact, I've got a colour wheel thing here. There you go. Uh, we should just appear about there and um, I do also use um, all of the range of Games Workshop models and things as well because I just like paints and you know and there's a contrast paint of theirs called Plague Bearer Flesh and you know I could probably mix some of that up by blending some of these colours together but um, I also don't mind buying these if I like specifically to, to give them a try. I did put some on this one actually if I go back to the the desk view, there it is. I can really go zooming in. But uh, you can see basically on his little belt, and I, I I use some of that lead, what's it called? Plague bearer flesh uh, around the belt and on the clothing just to make it look so sort of horribly stained, really. Just going a little bit further there. So otherwise, you can see he's. Um, just been mostly washed and which is why he looks all sort of scabby and his knees look bony and fleshy and horrible really um, and then I used actually I used another color from a company called weird green stuff world there it is they do these candy inks which are great really bright super bright candy inks and I just put some of that on some of the uh, sort of fleshy fleshy nodules that are growing out of this monster guy. So I won't do any more talking, I'll just paint actually, because that's really naff just listening to someone talk about this when they're not doing it in front of them. So basically I've got a few more. And they've been um, primed uh, in kind of a grey black and then they've had highlight put on them as well. Ken, I'm always afraid to mix custom colours when I'm going to need consistency. Yeah, there is that. I mean, and I suppose because I'm doing just a few models here and there's zombies and things, I'm not really worried about consistency. Although I think the more you do it, the more you can then work out exactly what you want to do. So, you you know, you spend a few days doing these custom mix ups and then suddenly things are, you know, working out for you in terms of thinking, oh, I can get back to that color that I had before. So like the, these two, um, I gave them that flesh. I'm sure I've got another one of these somewhere. Oh, be annoying if I'm just doing the two. Um, and there's another one. I'm going to have to... Oh no, too late. I've already started, but I thought I'm sure I've got two pairs of these and I'm going to end up painting these when I should really do all three or four together kind of thing. Oh well, I'll just get stuck in. These ones look like they're more um, zombie, kind of traditional zombie skeleton. And these ones are a specific one from the Barrow Maze set where they are, um, they're something to do with something in the game where they've got like a particular 
ailment that's growing out of them. Yeah, that is true. You could keep the the, uh, the wet palette paper if you've done it. So if I wanted to try and get that uh, green that I had on there, that kind of sickly green, I'll try that again. Um, I'll try just sort of mixing a few things up and see what comes out. I, mean, I could show the palette, didn't I? So you can actually do it and get rid of that overlay. There, so I'm just mixing it. I wonder how close I can go with that camera. It's a bit of blue, a bit of green, and then yellow to sort of bring it through. In fact, what I did on these ones before as well is I put a little bit of sort of red in for flesh tone as well so as you sort of blend down you're getting closer to the sort of color you want so i'm getting closer to the the sort of green that i had on there will be a bit of a bad picture there zombie dry cleaners we get the brains out yeah that's a good idea well they actually do that in uh they do that chuck in in japan um, because they have so many people die alone now in Japan because there's so many old uh, loners without relatives anymore. There's people that go around and just, they specialize in cleaning bodies. And interestingly enough, I watched a, a TV thing on it and the guys, when they collect the bodies and clean up and it's a pretty horrible state because some of them have been there for months, every doll or figurine in the house is removed and then a um, priest, a Buddhist type priest, or is it? I can't remember what else. So, sort of like a Buddhist priest, isn't it? In, in um, Japan, they have to bless every single photo or anything that had eyes, like a creature that witnessed the person dying on their own, because it's said that the kind of evil spirits or anything are locked into those, the eyes of all those dolls. Which means, with every single one of these miniatures, um, if I die alone, they'd all have to be uh, blessed if I lived in Japan because they'd all be sort of witness to the death. Uh, well, that's just a crazy fact for you, but it's very interesting because these, these guys that do the cleaning, they have, they have huge warehouses where they put all of the dolls and any models, toys, fur dogs, everything, teddy bears, they put them in these big warehouses ready to be uh, blessed because they have to be before the, the kind of ritual of death or whatever it is is, is successful. Uh, fascinating stuff and maybe a bit more yellow in there and uh, a little touch of red to give it um, of a dark browny pinky color at some point on there too because they were sort of human at some point um, I don't mind adding a bit of that in as well and to sort of give it a slightly pinky fleshy look too in amongst the green right I've put my new, um, well it's not new, I've got another lens which I've put on here and um, it doesn't let me get in really close actually. Right, so now after mixing a whole load of the pigment, I'm going on the uh, um, the bits that are like gory as well because I'll go over them in red later. And those bony leg things are giving them a slightly more fleshy look. How's that looking on the camera? Sort of in focus. Yeah, because these had like an undercoat of um, uh, primer of black, and I went over with a slightly 
uh, like a white ink, it does give them a slight more um, pre-shade. I may have actually airbrushed some purple on this as well, because these haven't been painted at all, though. You can see there's a slight purple tinge to the back. It's a classic case that I've had these for ages. Thanks, Ken. Good luck with work. Shinto Buddhism, yes. Strange that they have to... Um, because the other thing that they do in Japan is they... Um, you know those... Is there Avos or Evos? The Sony, Sony make those robotic dogs. They also get a send-off if they die, as if they had real spirits. And you can go to a Shinto uh, ritual in a temple, official, you know, properly done by a monk and priest or whatever they are there, um, to say goodbye to your Sony when it finally runs out, the batteries don't work or what have you. Well, obviously, many of them are kept to work as long as they possibly can because they they have some value. So it's going on a bit thin, as you can see, which is fine. You can see how black underneath the hand is, uh, because the when I had the sort of pre-shade on the airbrush, it hasn't. Uh, I did a kind of top down, so it didn't paint there at all. Paint didn't get on there at all. So there was a kind of a dark brown I made in the middle of the palette, which I'll just um, paint on the... Belt, maybe on the trousers a bit. My French minis. Oh yeah, Tom. Those um, those orcs. Those big orcs. Is that what you're talking about? The French minis. I do need to get onto those. Could be using a bigger brush than this, I think, because I am sort of washing on here. Really, it doesn't really need such a fine brush, but I'm kind of rolling with it at the moment. Rackham stuff, maybe. Yeah, I can't. Oh, yeah, I have some of that still somewhere, some Rackham. Giving him orange hair, which I can wash down with a with a brown that will tone it down a bit. But it still looks kind of like disgusting, rank cold sort of brownie brownie red hair. What the yeah, Rackham didn't they make um they did a sort of range of wolves and things that got very popular. I can't remember the name of the game. So this guy maybe I'll go more towards the um normal fleshy 
color. Just wanted a nice dark green kind of waistcoat for him, even though it's got a purple prime on it. Yeah, well, I've just sort of said to myself recently, I've got quite a lot of you know backlog miniatures like most people have, and uh, I just decided to kind of just get on with it really and I am sort of speed painting really that's the other thing is that it's a case of just trying to get it done really loaded the brush up there to get that covered it's still very thin paint so you can see it's leaving the white at the top just this little shiny through almost like a wash really Don't know why I went for the waistcoat first, it was just happened to happen. Should have really gone for the flesh to try and do the sort of body first. Is that even on the camera? Yeah, yeah. I'm moving my tray around, I shouldn't do that. Just made a kind of a dark brown colour with a bit of yellow and red in it and I'm going to use that for his uh, for this guy's main cloak really just splash it all over They're all going to get an oil wash when they're done. It's like an oil, um, put the oil on and then kind of strip half of it off again. That's what I tend to do these days. I did a big dragon recently. It's one of the bigger models I've done recently. And I did it in like, um, something like three hours by just doing an oil wash. So this is speed painting. Now I don't know how obvious that is, but the colour of the hair is quite different from the the mix I'm putting on the uh, the jacket. Yes, no, yeah, definitely learning patience. I'm, um, I'm weird because I'm like one of them. Probably, I think I'm quite an impatient, kind of impulsive person. But for some reason, with painting, since I was a twelve-year-old, I am um, quite happy to sit for hours doing airfix models. And yes, yeah, so I was doing the airfix models when, you know, when I was six or seven or something. 
and then fantasy models when I was 11, 12. Who else is going to have a brown jacket? Maybe this guy, because I'm just sort of working through. He's got another waistcoat guy, really. He's got a bit on his belt as well. Yeah, here you can see that the, the white from the top down, and you can see how thin that paint is going on there. And uh, it's allowing the the colour from underneath to show through. It's probably the best example I've had on these models because they're a bit um, zombie, aren't they? Uh, lots of little bits and things on them. Not necessarily an easy large space to show you how the the glaze gives you that white to dark with very little paint. Yeah, models like this one in particular, you know, not your favorite, my favorite model really, you know, it's okay, isn't it? But it's a case of um, when you get a set like this, you don't always get brilliant models, but it's still interesting. I've put a chicken on the base, um, which I should do in a very dark, I'm going to do that even darker brown. Chocolate brown going on, I've just mixed up. I could have done it with a reddish tinge as well. Maybe I could dry brush up red or something on the chicken later. Yeah, that was my attempt at sort of comedy basing to... Uh, it's a very niche... Um, niche hobby comedy basing of chickens. You know, why wouldn't you have a chicken on the base of a zombie? oblivious to the uh, danger and do zombies eat chickens or uh, did they eat a horse in walking dead oh there's a skull over there and that will take a dark um a dark brown which could be highlighted up later as well like a half skull i've embedded there So yeah, that's one of the things when, you, when you're doing um, a palette like this, where I've just got the primary colours and I'm just working away. It's just like I had a brown smear there, which I did his leather leather jacket with, uh, leather waistcoat, and then, then I just put some black in the brown, darkened it down to get a chocolate brown, which I used on the chicken. Um, the green, which I blended, some yellow uh, into the green, plus actually some blue. And at one point I even put some red into the green to give it that more, you can see the pinky, uh, more pinky fleshy colour coming through for the zombie. And just a reminder again, I'm using those Liquitex paints, so, you know, you just get the primary colours in the basic set. They do do a load of colours, like uh, Light Games Workshop, they do a ton of colours in this gooch, goosh, acrylic goosh, or gauche. Gauche, goosh. Um, anyway, it's very thick, really strong pigment, squirts out in little blobs. It's great for wet palettes because on a wet palette, you know, it's very stable on a wet palette. It's not going to run away on you. You know, that's one of the things about thinner paints on a wet palette. They do sort of smear more quickly. Um, and then, of course, the classic, which I use all the time, is the glaze medium, which is kind of a go-to to use if you're going to do any of this kind of undershading where you've primed a model and used a, an ink to airbrush a white onto it to leave a, a dark shadow. So just talking through that again you can see how the, there was a white area on the top of that cloak and uh, what's happened when I painted is the dark darker area is showing through the thin pigment. Um, so of course it's showing that the, the sculptor kind of worked that quite heavily um, in terms of the back there 
but uh, you can see it's gone darker and that's not because I painted it heavier at the bottom that's just because uh, at the bottom it was already a darker shade underneath there and he's got like a white airbrush on the top so the airbrush white that I used is Liquitex as well their acrylic uh, white ink and it gives uh, allows you to do that top down so from underneath he's all dark um, but from the top down he's white so I think realistically I should I should really do these two guys in a similar colour. I was thinking of making them a little bit more fleshy. Particularly, you know, his chest is going to be a sort of a dark brown initially, and then I can shade that up a bit whiter like because it's more bony. But he's still got some flesh around there hanging off the top of his neck. So uh, before it goes bony. And I always wonder, I always think really with a freshly dead sort of zombie the bones would still have that sort of sinewy reddish um, fatty material on them so you wouldn't necessarily be like a pure bleached bone would it because it's still got um, rotten horrible stuff in there going on really nate uh, yeah that's nice if he was a history oh nicholas abruzzo gave me a full stop thank you confrontation adam that is right yeah it was confrontation models i've got some confrontation models which I'd painted um, a long time ago and just had some recently actually they did a nice um, they did a mercenary set confrontation did it was a box set with about eight um, models but they were um, men at arms type models and they were heroic scale so more like 30 mil size uh, but each one was an old warrior so they all looked about sort of 50 55 years old one of them a bit overweight and they were an excellent set So yeah, so back to painting again now. I'm just gonna um add more yellow to the brown on the palette to get a and then a little bit of white in there. Maybe a, a smidge of red. That's it, I'm getting a a fleshy a dark fleshy tone, which I might do on the two less weird looking zombies. Um more traditional zombies. So yeah, I'll just show you what I've done on the palette. So I've just smeared down my brown, added in some red and some yellow, and it's giving me that more of a pinky, fleshy colour. Um, and then obviously just mix in some more of the uh, glaze medium from over here, which I've just got a smear off there. Mix it in there. Desktop. Right, this is going on the skin then. So this is going to give him quite a peachy look initially, which I'll then layer on but because it's so thin um, it's going to um, it's going to go all over him in a kind of a near of a wash and then I'll worry about layering on a more sort of green fleshy look later Yeah, I'm quite happy. I've uh, just put this new uh, a new lens on. Well, I'd say it was a new saying it's a new lens. It was a uh, one I've had around for a while, like a macro lens, and it's enabled me to thinking of backing that project, Chronicles Cooperative War Game. No, I've not seen that one, Adam. Can't really look at it at the moment because uh, I'm right in the middle of it. Yeah, so that's got some red and orangey sort of tones going through. Slightly rotten. I think I should do the main. The main um, uh, 
uh, sorry, not the mane, uh, the extra foot he's got in his hand in a more traditional flesh tone, as if he's ripped a new foot off some of a, of a someone that's actually alive. His feet. Oh, he's got a boot on that foot. So I'll do that in the. Oh, there's another chicken on there. So I could do his boot and the chicken in quite dark sort of colours. Like he maybe had a sort of black boot before at some point. Adam, I'm. Uh, uh, I love my grunts, but it was um, was it eight years ago now that I did it, and um, it's. Uh, I'm quite happy that I put it out there, but I'm not in a rush to to do a V2. I am working on it, um, but um, you know, V1 never really made any money. It was a it was a labour of love. It cost me probably. Two thousand pounds ish to get it out the door with art and all the time. Well, not counting my time, not even counting my time. Um, I think over the years I've been making, you know, between twenty and thirty pound a month back. So it's not really ever paid for itself. And I've, but I have had more artwork done last year, mainly because I'm into the artwork um, for the version two, and it is uh, of interest to me. But it's not a big push at the moment. I would have, um, I think. Without the um, the lockdown, I was doing Salute Wargame Show this year and I had a massive piece of terrain um, which I was going to do for Grunts and we were going to play the prototype uh, beta test of, of version 2 there um, and that would have given me some a push if people showed some interest in it but uh, it's, not, um, it's not something I've really got the time to uh, focus on in terms of all the beta testing and everything that's needed while I'm on lockdown. What I tend to find with writing the rules is that um, I can play with my uh, friends and when I do that it's a real good stimulation to get it done if you know what I mean because we, we end up rolling for a game and, and when I'm not playing it's very difficult to To move the rules on unless I played on my own which is a bit boring I mean that's tended to be how I developed both the, the first version and the new one is that I played with friends every time I was playing uh, rather than you know lonely sitting and rolling dice well that, well, that could be done yeah, it's a shame if I think if salute had gone on uh, you know, I had tickets, just threw my tickets in the bin this week, actually. It was only two weeks ago that uh, it was meant to be on. I would have... Um, I would have had some more grunts on underway, I think.
true yeah it's a little bit dry um but um you know ultimately when it gets down to it you've got to when you're writing rules like uh, that grunts rule set it is about the hard grind in the end uh what i found with both grunts and um imperial skies when i did the kickstarter for that is that it was that last five percent of getting the rules laid out and completed that took all the time um, because i'm quite good at laying out um charts and tables quickly but then when it comes to the hard slog of getting all the layout done properly it, it does take time as i always hear when i see people say oh well i'm I think I'm about 80% complete on these rules. When you see people talk about, you know, role playing or any kind of rules, and then actually it's that last probably 10, five, 10% 10 that kind of some reason takes nearly as much time as the rest of it did. Particularly when I did the Imperial Skies rules because I, uh, I promised myself to do a painting guide. So I put like a 20 page painting guide in the back of the Imperial Skies book. And um, it took me about a month to do it because uh, I painted about six different, and I was only painting like six different ships. And you think, oh, I could get six ships done in a day, but not if you've got to do them. Everyone in a different deck color, everyone in a different hull color, and then photo every stage. That meant that, you know, it's not as easy as doing an army, is it? <clears throat> it nearly killed me finishing that off, doing that. Right, so as you can see, I ended up doing these trousers at the same time as everything else and just sort of using whatever colour I had on the palette. And because they're zombies, it doesn't matter if it kind of goes in onto his legs. Ended up being the same belt colour. Yeah, they create stats, names for stuff, decide on some dice, and they think we're nearly done. This is a good game. And then six months later, they haven't really got there. It's, it's, it's really hard to get your, to get it get it done. I'm pleased that I've done, you know, my first one on for Grunts was an Indiegogo campaign, and then I did a, a Kickstarter for Imperial Skies. And... Um, I got them both out and done and complete, which was good. Um, you know, it's evidence, isn't it? It's good to know, oh, I've got, I can do it. I can get a set of rules out. I can go around the shows and play the game and do enough to get people interested. Although they're ultra niche. I mean, they really are ultra niche, um, Imperial Skies and, and Grunts. But I don't mind that, you know. And I never had any grand scheme, you know, some people start um, and they go, oh, I'm going to do miniature range, I'm going to do a bit of everything. And I'll tell you what, that seems very hard. I've met a few miniature companies that have got started and they've got, you know, some 15 mil sci-fi or maybe they've got some spaceships and they've done those. They launch them and everybody goes, these are great, when are you going to expand the range? And then they do, they do another set of three ships or another, you know, squad of 15 mil sci-fi. And then, then someone says, you're going to do a game for this? You know, I want to know, I want to use my faction that I've got from you in a game. Um, and suddenly they've gone from, oh, well, I was, I was a little mini company and now I'm going to write these rules. And again, that's another challenge, giving yourself too much, uh, too much to do. Well, he's got a black boot, he's got black, brown trousers. Under his armpit there's a bit unpainted. Well, whoever the mini sculptor artist was on this, he really has, you can sort of see where maybe he's pulled the flesh back from a, a face and things. He's done a really good job. And, um, you know, the kind of thing I'll do here is towards the end of painting this is bring out the teeth by highlighting the teeth and things up there as well. You were going this year, Adam, for the first time. Well, that's great. So let's see him even closer up. 
You can see where I haven't I've missed paint. <laughs> you can see how the skin is flaying off though. That, that whoever modeled this, what a great job they did, the skin flaying off the chest. You know, from a distance as a model, it doesn't look like much, but you know, the skin's flaying off the arm. I could see a bit of paint that I missed up the top there. So just jumping back to this one. Oh, I should still continue to use the colors I had for this guy's flesh, although again, I wasn't too worried. And I think I may make this one a little bit, a little bit more green in there, brownie green as well. No harm in him looking a bit more rotten. This paint's looking very thin now on the palette, so I'll just mix in some colors again. a good green on this one, highlight it through. You can't see me mixing um, and a little bit of red in it too to give it a peachy fleshy colour. Got a whole blend of greens and things coming up there, look on the just blended down by mixing in green and then some white and then some red for a more peachy colour and then down to a brown. Mix in some of the pigment. So a weird in between red, kind of very dark peachy fleshy colour for this guy. Go back over to him. The guy has a foot. Yeah, he does. <laughs> yeah, he has a foot. All right. I haven't painted it yet. Maybe I'll use that peachy color on the foot actually first there. You need to do, I need to do basically at the top of that foot, I'll need to do some red to make it look like um, it's freshly sort of bitten, chewed off. Uh, plus, maybe do a little white mark in the middle, so that you can see the sort of bone where it's chewed off, keeping it gory, obviously. Yeah, so pleased that the foot is slightly more pink than his greeny, greeny yellowy hue. Slightly more red in it. Yes, yeah, so thanks for reminding me of that. Then I was going to do the rest of this guy with uh, the same pinky cut. Maybe a bit too much. Time for me to eat and sleep. Where are you, Adam? Are you having a? Are you running? Are you later time zone than us?
know, this is the one that had the chicken on the base that uh, given a base colour to. Getting his feet done. All these zombies seem to have in common that uh, their feet are quite in quite good condition, really. They're not suffering from missing toes or anything. Yeah, so giving this guy a very reddish tone in comparison. He's going to need some washes and some darkening down on that tone and then some highlights around the face, especially to give some look as if some bone is stretching through there. Yeah, when you're doing it this thin like I am, every, everything that's going on is really thinned paint uh, mixed with the um, Vallejo glaze medium and therefore it um, often needs more than one coat or it won't cover every sort of black corner when you first go on. So immediately while I'm painting this, I could see that if I mix some red in, I could go on with the red here straight away on the on the head to represent some of that flayed skin, or is it hair, whatever it is on the top there, flayed scalp. Some green trousers that look like they need because the white's gone on them. I'll just pick up some green here as well. There it goes. And he's definitely more fleshy, fleshy looking. Although the other guy is quite similar when they're beside each other. More of a dark skin. Which will be interesting because it will take a it will take a sort of a bony highlight around the face there, I think.
going to paint the teeth the whiter colour, but they'll need a wash. It's got a ropey looking arm there. It's not the best of the models in the set really. Uh, what I haven't done is this guy's kind of weird growths kind of comes out of his eye it's got some coming out of his lower part of his lower leg and his arm some sort of weird worms Marshall, it dries um, pretty quickly. Let's see back to the one I started earlier. Where was, what was I doing? That cloak was, look, that's gone. You can see there's a little bit of the mixing medium right at the base of that. Probably right at the base there that's not 100% dry yet. And that's been, what, 10, 15 minutes. Um, the other guy's leathery cloak, though, that dried, that leathery waistcoat, that, that dried quite quick. Probably less than five minutes, so it's quite quick to dry, really, that medium, the glazed medium. I mean, it is just another, it is just another medium, like, that's normally in a paint. Uh, they normally have a mixing medium in there, it's just increasing the... Thin, it's just thinning the paint whilst not removing too much of its colour. Some I missed on there. Yeah, so he's quite green, um, running through to the brown, and then a slightly more orangey head that's being mixed in. some darker green in the neck there while I was doing the reds jumping between things. So I used some candy ink on the uh, other one of these earlier to sort of exaggerate the, the weird red growths and that, that works out quite well. I'll show that in a moment.
Yeah, so the other one in that, it's, almost, it's the same model. All I did was basically with these two, I bent that one's arm down, which is why it looks a bit odd uh, when his arm should be up like that one, just to make them look a slightly bit different because they were exactly the same model. Um, but uh, yeah, I've gone on with some of that candy pink to sort of exaggerate some of this. And it's quite shiny in places actually. They look significantly different. This one's got, uh, yeah, I feel like I could um, do something with the teeth again on there just to bring them out a bit. Yes, that one's got a mouse on the base. This one's got a couple of mushroom, toadstool uh, mushroomy things and a skull around there I've just seen. So that skull can get uh, some brown paint on it. Yeah, when I'm doing this on the video, I tend to jump between two or three things at once. Like I've just gone, oh, I'll do that skull while I was still doing the flesh or something, you know. It's just the way it turns out. And then I've realized, so I was doing that skull, maybe I could highlight up the skull on this one's base as well, just to sort of give it some more definition around the, the eyes and stuff. Yeah, trying to give them that sort of look where the the skin is um, in some places the bones coming through the skin just for a bit of fun really while I'm doing it his eyes need something like a Maybe I could go in there with a little bit of black in the eyes to darken it down in there. One's more of a socket, the other one's got like a old eyeball in there. Will this pack have a leader amongst them? Yeah, I've got some good leader models for these. 
got a model from Hassle Free Miniatures. It's like a big female sort of zombie. And she's pretty heavyweight. Sort of looking character that could be a, a leader. Yeah, so he's got that look going on. So what I could do with him now is um, get like a pallet out there and just use some of this ancient sepia from Green Stuff World and uh, drop a bit of that in there. Don't need much. Just a little bit of water on the brush and in there just to sort of thin it down because it's really nice stuff. I'm only thinning it with water but you can see it's quite dark and I want it quite thin to go over the face. Just to bring that reddish tone, I probably put a bit too much red in the flesh. Brings it all down a bit. I just realised I haven't painted his belt yet. It's looking a bit wet and gory there, isn't it? He also actually does have a sort of hair on the side of his head. That's probably worth bringing that bringing that out in a a brown. It's funny when I do that zoom in, that's the only time I can really see the model as well because my eyes aren't good enough to see it from this sort of ice, normal eyesight distance. So back to the uh, slightly pale green guy that's had some darker green put in underneath his uh, chest there. I'm going to pick out uh, with some thinned down reddish brown and just going to layer some onto some of the fleshy areas to make him look a little bit more maybe was human than just a green thing. Oops, a lot of water on that brush. Yeah, so if anybody's sort of joined and watching at any point, this is uh, just sort of speed painting through these, really. I don't know what colour to do the mushrooms, just sort of more brown, I think.
This is kind of more of that weird zombie thing going on on the leg. More red going on there. Yeah, it looks pretty rotten. Some white and just picking some of these wormy bits coming out of him. So there was this other one here that I did the other day, uh, which I could also go because I'm giving it that sort of treatment where I've decided I'm going to put little dots of white on the on the entrails and things. Oh, I was speed painting when I started, but then when I get going, I end up just doing too much detail. But I can speed paint if I'm on my own. <laughs> but then when I'm doing a, a set like this, I tend to just, uh, uh, and I'm on, and I'm sort of streaming as well. So I end up um, just going around the houses over and over again as I do them, when I should really just get finished. So I've got these intensity inks from green stuff world. Shake it up a bit. Drop some in there. No, it's not coming out. That's not a good sign. It's dried up. I've got a solution for that, if that ever happens. Uh, just a cocktail stick into the top. It's probably going to go everywhere. I can see the incoming now. Let's 
Let's use a slightly bigger brush. Well, this is a two graduate to put some of that uh, red just to bring out the some more of the goriness in there. Don't need to put it over every bit. This one had some earlier actually, but I put some more on. see how intense this intensity ink as they call it from green stuff world is is you can sort of airbrush it on or do anything with it really it's, it's, it is a strong strong pigment a bit like the contrast paints from games workshop really so what have we done so i wonder how i can put something on there just to show what i've done in a reasonable way Put that down there and then lean them back. Then I can sort of get them into focus. So there, you know, it's kind of a wash technique. It's really, I mean, it is relatively quick apart from when I slow down. And um, that one, I haven't done his face yet. And this one, his face is looking a little bit more complete. Let's see if I can zoom into it. And a greenish guy at the end. It's looking pretty gory with all of his rotten stuff coming out. Hmm. Sorry about that. Just got them out of focus again. So that's uh, that's it for me now because I've just done an hour or so. I think. How long have I been streaming? one hour 20 minutes so yeah that's quite a long time so I need to move so that's me and thank you very much for listening in yeah sorry i didn't i mean i keep thinking i'm gonna get these finished but uh it's a progress update isn't it so there are they're still in progress still a lot to do um to get these done and um yeah i'll be pleased to get them out of the way these zombies and then uh, get the bases done and i said i'm gonna do an oil wash on these as a final kind of um uh, shade on them too so that will like really darken down uh, some of the areas uh, but that will also come off the highlights when I uh, use some thinners to pull the uh, oil paint off as well so thank you for watching and uh, hopefully see you uh, again